What's up? It's Frankie, man. Let me say I'm not a financial advisor. Anything that I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Whatever I say in this video is my opinion. It may not necessarily be factual. Don't buy, sell, or hold a, hold a stock based on anything that I say in this video. And don't vote on the proposals, you know, based on anything that I say in this video. And like I said, man, whatever I say in this video is just my opinion. It may just be allegations. You know, don't take any of it to be factual. You know, I'm just expressing how I feel. When it comes to our short squeeze play, I feel like we got a lot of hypocrites in our short squeeze play. A lot of investors, man, they hypocrites. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, we was quick to talk about, you know, the one percenters taking our shares, trying to take our shares. But, you know, some of these retail investors, they don't want to talk about how Adam Aaron may be trying to help the one percenter take our shares. Because they think it's something in it for them, you know, if they allow them to do it. You see what I'm saying? So, man, that's being a hypocrite. You can talk about the one percent is doing something to kill the more ads or to take out shares, but you can't talk about Adam Aaron if he's doing something. See, that's hypocrisy. You see what I'm saying? And see, I want to give a shout out to AB Investment. I enjoyed your lot. And you see what I'm saying? And I agree with you. The, the, sh the short squeeze play and the more ads. All this stuff, man, is bigger than Adam Aaron. I've said that in the past. You see what I'm saying? And I know, you know, that the people behind everything, they some very powerful as well as ruthless individuals because I know who's controlling the financial system, the stock market. You see what I'm saying? On a national level as well as the international level. So I know the people that's behind it. And I agree with you. It's a whole lot bigger than Adam Aaron. But here's the thing, man. The reason why I talk about Adam Aaron because I think, in my opinion, Adam Aaron does a lot of things, slick stuff, like I said yesterday, to financially hurt people. And for me, man, I can't give him a pass for doing that kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? And see, trust me, man, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm not infallible. You know, I make mistakes. I fall short of things sometimes. But I'm going to be honest with you. In this short squeeze play, it's a stock play. You got all kind of people in this play. And you got some people in this play, based on what I see, my opinion, you got some people, man, that don't have no morals, they don't have no values, they don't have no ethics, they don't have no principles, and they definitely are not spiritual. You see what I'm saying? And they definitely don't have a connection with the universe. You can just look at the way they act and how they move. And see, for some of these people, man, that's in our stock play, they will let Adam Aaron take billions of dollars, man, from retail investors, and they wouldn't say nothing if they thought it was something in it for them. Retail investors in our play, they'll let them get away with it. They'll put a fig leaf over it, they'll cover it up. See what I'm saying? If they thought it was something in it for them, you can just look at how they're moving and now, how they acting with the stuff that Adam Aaron is doing. You see what I'm saying? And I get it, man. We, we're in the stock market. Anytime you invest, man, in a stock, you know, it's always risking you gambling to a certain extent. But you don't have to be getting robbed. See, man, when you say you're going to take 90% of our shares and you're going to create some type of voting system to make sure it get done, and every time retail, man, try to make money, somebody stop it. See, man, retail investors, man, they're getting robbed. And see, look, Adam Aaron is the CEO of one of the most popular stocks in the stock market. As a result of being the CEO in a stock like AMC, he's he has made millions of dollars for him and for his family. You see what I'm saying, man? His family has been able to become financial freedom, financially free because of this stock and because of us. So trust me, man, he can take some constructive criticism. He's a big boy. You see what I see what I'm saying, man? He can handle it. And see, man, in my opinion. Adam Aaron, man, he knew what retail investors wanted in this play the whole time. You see what I'm saying? Like I said, I feel like he played psychological games, man, with retail investors. He played on retail investors, man. He played on our emotions. You see what I'm saying? And also, man, you know, I think that him, along with one percenters, man, they got together and they intentionally, man, made us bag holders so that they can make a whole lot of money and so that they can get rich. You see what I'm saying? And think about it, man. 
like it, and it does appear this way. I didn't see it when Lou was talking about it, but when I, you know, when I step back and I look at everything, it seemed like every time, man, we tried to move forward and make money in this stock retail investor, he will always do something to kill it. When Lou was talking about it, man, I didn't see it, man, because I had a ton of vision and I was listening to these zealots. But when you step back, man, and you look at everything, it seemed like every time, man, we tried to make money off this stock, we have a run up, he would do something to kill it. You see what I'm saying? And as far as him, man, talking about, man, he's going to fight the corruption in this stock, man, I don't believe it. Because, man, they're not going to let him do nothing about it. He may he want to lead us to believe that he want to do something about it because he don't, in my opinion, because he don't want to piss us off. And, you know, he don't want us to really see what's it, see what's really going on with the stock. But, man, he's not going to do anything about it because, look, man, it's nothing wrong with share intel. Why wouldn't he want to use some type of technology to do some type of forensic analysis, man, to see if criminal activity is taking place with his stock? Why wouldn't he want to do that? If you got criminals in your stock and you got illegal neck and short in your stock, why wouldn't you want to know? Could the reason that you don't want to use something like, you know, share and tell or some type of software to track the illegal neck and shorts in your company because you already know it's billions of synthetic shares running through your company? Could it be because you already know who's doing it? Could it be because, man, you know you got to clean this mess up, this garbage up? And you don't want nothing out there, man, to just show what's going on with your company. Could it be, man, you already know? I'm just asking the question. You see what I'm saying? And see, man, Adam Aaron, I, some of y'all brainwashed. Adam Aaron, man, is not a silverback. If you look at the people, man, that have been able to financially benefit from this stock, it's been one percenters, man, almost the entire time. Not us. Every time, man, we try to make money, man, we get stopped in our tracks. You see what I'm saying? And the thing, man, as far as the entire capital is concerned, my thing is this, man. A a predatory short sell. See what I'm saying? Like Antara Capital. They don't give a damn about retail investors and they don't give a damn about AMC. Matter of fact, they got puts on AMC. They don't give a damn, my man, about AMC. How, man, how would, how could anything positive coming from a business deal that Adam Aaron has put together with Antara Capital be good for retail investors? That's why I'm voting no on all that guys. I can't see it being good for retail, for good for retail investors. And I was looking at the Marine video and I couldn't really just hear it, but I was looking at his video. And in his video, Adam Aaron, was, I guess he was talking to another shareholder, man, in one of the theaters. So the shareholders, you know, was asking him, why did he do what he did with Ontario Capital? So I think his statement, because I could barely hear it, the audio. But his statement was they paid, I think, a hundred million or something, 110 million or whatever of the debt off. And plus they offered him like 110 million dollars in cash. You see what I'm saying? He got like 220 million or whatever it was, you know, and he said that it's no way that he could have got. He didn't think he could get that, you know, from retail invest. That's what it sounded like he was saying. I mean, I'm like, man, that's a lie. You see what I'm saying, man? Look. That deal went down, in my opinion, because they desperate and they need our shares. You see what I'm saying? And they got to have our shares to clean up this garbage. But, man, retail investors for six to eight cents, they wouldn't have bought eight. Man, we'd have bought them shares. You see what I'm saying? But what it is, man, when that stock went up, he rather, he, once again, a one percenter. He rather see a, he rather see one percenters make all that money. Instead of us making that money when it go up, it, man, I, man, it ain't that that we wouldn't have helped him, that we wouldn't have bought them shares and helped them get that money. Hey, man, that's BS. You see what I'm saying? And see, man, look, the whole thing is this, man. With Adam Aaron and these one percenters, like I said, man, they desperate for our shares. You see what I'm saying? And the thing is, man, they don't want to have to pay all this money that they got pay, that they got to pay out. You know, when when they get ready to come. That's all it is. So for me, if you ask me, the reverse stock split, like I've said in past videos, man, the reverse stock split to me 
It's nothing but a bailout for one percenters. That's all it is. You see what I'm saying? All he's doing, he's helping them cover. He's taking one for the team. He's helping them cover so they don't have to spend all this money that they that they should have to spend, you know, for um the reckless behavior. Because, see, in my opinion, man, they've taken all that money over a period of two years, and they made trillions of dollars with it. And you see what I'm saying? And look, my thing is, look, if they, it's so, in my opinion, man, it's so many synthetic shares running through AMC. Even if they wanted to pay, they couldn't pay because of their reckless behavior. You see what I'm saying? So my thing is, man, look, man, you know, the retail investors, some of the retail investors are not short squeeze play. To me, man, they just as bad as the hedge funds and the short sellers because, man, they try to help them, man, they try to help them cover up all this garbage. So if you ask me, man, they ain't no better. You see what I'm saying? But like I said, man, to me, Adam Aaron, man, he's not a silverback. And not only that, man, they need our shares, man. And I'm going to close with this. You know, what I know is this. They need our shares. Not only, man, do they need our shares, they want us out of this stock play. So for me, I'm going to stay in this stock play, man. I'm going to get my money. But here's the dilemma, man. Here's what, you know, as far as, man, cashing out of this short squeeze play. Here's what, here's the way I see it. This is just my opinion, man. I ain't no financial advisor. You do you. you no, know, sell your shares however you want to. Hold them. Do whatever you got to do. For me, I know, man, eight, with eight run, when eight run, I'm out of here. There's no way. I'm going to let my eight shares go through a one to 10 reverse stock split. I'm selling eight. That's, that's almost a guarantee of definite. I'm not letting eight being, you no know, go through no type of conversion. I'm not doing that. But now the dilemma is, is do I want to sell before the reverse stock split or after the reverse stock split? And here's the way I look at it. Everybody is different. Everybody know how much money they want to make. The, me personally, the only way I see, because like I said, man, I got in this to make money. It's not just a regular play for me. I could have got in any stock and just made four times my money, two times my money, three times my money. I got in this short squeeze play to make money. So for me, if I sell before the reverse stock split, it's got a rip. You see what I'm saying? It's just that simple. Not no four times, not no five times, not even no 10 times. If I sell before the reverse stock split, it has the real. I mean, I know how much money I'm looking for. And the reason why I say, man, it's got a rip is because let's say, man, for some reason, because we all know, we all know, man, this play is being managed. Ain't about fundamentals. You know, they, we know it's beans of synthetic shares out there. So it ain't got nothing to do with fundamentals. Nobody don't know, man, how this play going to go, how it's going to rip. So let's say, for instance, man, if this if it does rip after the reverse stock split, even if, even if they've taken all of our shares, they let it rip. Let's say it does for some reason go into the thousands. You know, if I sell before the reverse stock split, I got to be comfortable with the amount of money that I made. So if for some reason they do let it rip and people make money, I could be like, man, it's cool. Everybody make their money. It's good. You know, I wasn't there for it. I made my money on this side. But if this play main does not rip, you know, prior to the reverse stock split, then most likely probably, man, I'm just going to go ahead. You know, I'm just going to try to make my money on the other side and see if it rip. You see what I'm saying? Even though, man, his lowdown ass, in my opinion, and these damn retail investors, they help this man and these one percenters take my shares. You see what I'm saying? I just man, come on the other side and see, you know, if it rip. You just wait. But the minute that I see, the minute that I see, because you ain't going to lose the value of your stock straight off the bat. You see what I'm saying? So you can always, in my opinion, sell your shares. You can do what you want to do. So if, you know, so if it real, then fine, cool. I get my money. But if for some reason, man, I see they coming in. I see, man, and Terra Capital. I see these institutions coming in because AMC got to wait from my understanding, what, 12 or 14 days. But if I see them, if I see it's not ripping and I see them come in, man, they immediately start showing that stock. I'm cashing out. It is what it is. 
See what I'm saying? Hey, look, I just wait later. I scalp AMC. I just sit back. But I'm not down my hand, man, through them liquid, through them um diluting the stock. That shit ain't happening. I'm not doing that. I'm not finna watch this stock go from, you know, if it was at $50 come all the way down. If it don't, if it get to $50 and it don't run. I'm not finna, I'm not finna stay in this stock while they dilute the stock. No, I make money off it. You know, I scalp it up. Even if it's gonna run, I, I get into it later. You see what I'm saying? But I'm not finna stay in it and let it ride all the way down, man. I'm not doing it. So that's the dilemma. You gotta, you got to see, man. You gotta know. You gotta, you need to be thinking about what you want to do now. You gotta look at if you're gonna sell, man, before the reverse stock split. That's if all this happened. Are you gonna sell before the reverse stock split or are you gonna sell after? Because here's the thing, too, man. Let's say if you sell before the reverse stock split. And you comfortable with that and you go, or let's just say you're going to try to sell before the reverse stock split. And then you're going to try to take that money and then get in after the reverse stock split. Hey, man, there's a possibility, man. They might not even say, you know, sure, they may lock you out. You might not be able to get back into play. So if you sell before the reverse stock split, you might not be able to get no more AMC shares to get back into play. They might lock you out the play. So if for some reason it does rip, you might not be able to take advantage of it. That's why I say if I sell before the reverse stock split, man, it's going to have to be something that I'm comfortable with. The play got to run. They got to rip. I ain't in this just for no, 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 no kibbles and bits and no crumbs. I got in this play, man, to make money. That's why I got in. And if it don't rip before the reverse stock split, then most likely, man, I'll be on the other side trying to get my money. But I'm not finna ride this stock all the way down. I'm not doing that shit. So, you know, you got to figure out, man, how you want to make your money. But I got to get ready to go to work, man. Thank you for taking time out to watch the video. Have a nice day.